We've invited some of today's hottest style influencers and industry experts to join us for a casual conversation about beauty, relationships, lifestyle, and everything that inspires us as we get close up and personal. Lisa D'Amato is today's special guest on Close Up and Personal. This is all new to me because I'm used to being a hairstylist backstage with like you guys, the talent, and worrying about you guys. But now I'm, I've kind of jumped to a different sort of medium, being in front of the camera. You're like, bitch, and look yeah, at me. Yeah, like, look at me now. <laughs> yeah. And I admire, all, I admire all, all three of you for having lived in the public eye. How does it feel to know that everything that you do, everything you put out there, people are gonna say stuff, they're gonna comment, you know, people like you for certain reasons, people hate you for certain reasons. How criticism? Do, criticism. Oh, yeah, how do you deal with how that? I mean, you know, I've always been somebody that wears my crazy on my sleeve, so there's never, everything is out. I try to be as authentic to who I am anyways. So regardless of what you do and how you say it and how you dress and whatever, someone's gonna say something negative yeah, about it. Of course. So personally, I'd much rather like, you know, be hated for who I am right. than be loved for something that's fake. Oh, I because love that. Second. I love it. <laughs> She's like the catchphrase yeah. genius, yes. I think. Jeez. Yeah. Like if I'm able to rise above it, then I also feel like I need to help and, and kind of um, pay back, you love know? It. Pay I it forward. I love when I hear that. Giving positive energy and you will receive positive energy. Yes. yes. So yes. speaking of being positive, you talked a little bit about um, how you kind of ignore the negative feedback that you get. Um, and I saw that you had a channel. I was lurking you. <laughs> and you, you had like music videos and stuff like that. And we post and just kind of like mm -hmm. open ourselves up to cyberbullying, which we get. And, like, no, I actually don't ignore it at all. You know, like, if you're making it big and you're doing something great, everyone's going to hate, right? And I actually don't ignore it. I constantly uh, speak about it online because to hear what type of society we live in where you're, you know, if you're in school and you're bullied and you grew up the way I did and when you come home, you're, it's a battlefield as well. A lot of kids nowadays, they go online to basically escape all that. And then right. if they're bullied there too, then they actually have nowhere to go. Yeah. Right. So instead of ignoring it, I like to kind of flip it and give them certain ways to address it. So like in creative, fun ways, you know, like one thing that I had on my website forever was, if you say all the horrible things about me, that's fine. I only wish I could pick the font and the color. Or, you know, yeah. you can cut me down that. to size, but I prefer the shape of a heart or a star. You know? Oh my God, you're the one-liner queen. Yes, <laughs> yeah. and it's, it's basically so that they, because if we just ignore it, then what are we, how are we helping the kids? Because right. they can't escape that, mm -hmm. you right. know what I mean? At some point, they're gonna break. So let's give them something positive and flip it. There's always a million ways to flip any situation. I've them. always felt like, you know, with the internet, a lot of them are young. So a lot of them are just, even they're if like they, they don't even mean what they're saying to yeah, you. They, they just, just want know. to piss you off. And I feel like when you address it, I feel sometimes it just makes it worse. No, I, 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 I don't address the actual people who do it mm -hmm. because then that's feeding them and giving them attention totally. online. No, I, mean, like, I address even it in general. A generalization. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because it is, you're right, they're like 12 and 14 year olds. So what I basically just always say is like, you know, the things that you put out online that are that negative, that are cyberbullying, that's not just going into a computer box. That's going to a human being with a beating heart. Right. You know, and I think that I'm, uh, because I, I, I exude so much confidence and, and um, you know, as soon as you're confident, people love to tag on the word arrogant, which right. is so not the case. It's not the truth, but it's easy to say that. So yeah. you're, it makes you an easy target. If you, if you present yourself as being the strongest woman in the world, then everyone's gonna try to yeah, tear you down. Yeah, they wanna attack you. Right. I always tell people success, that's the best revenge for haters. It's just do more, you know, mm -hmm. do more successful things and be more, yeah. mm -hmm. rise above it and just help others. And I, I know it's hard to think about it this way, but I know the people that I hate on the most are the people that A, are like a reflection of myself, something that I don't like about myself that I see in somebody else. Mm -hmm. I hate that because it like. You should never say the word hate. hate. My dad I dislike always, that. My dad always I said that. that. Never say the word hate, say dislike. Because just the right. word itself is just horrid. Yeah, okay, I, I dislike loathe. that. I <laughs> loathe <laughs> that, I loathe that. And I think a lot of it has to do with um, people wanting to be in your position but not 
finding ever feeling like it's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say that yeah. haters are actually secret admirers. I think that there's absolutely no way, this is why I don't pay attention, because there's no way that someone would put forth that much energy into something that they don't care about. Exactly. I, I like, really Michelle's have tacky to care. outfit hall of fame. <laughs> no, my tacky outfit. <laughs> I have a form that's dedicated to just, yeah. And yeah. I just ignore it and I realize, oh my gosh, they 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 find photos that I didn't even know I took. Yeah. It's incredible. Oh my God. I've yeah. had like personal photos, literally, like not okay. Like <laughs> where'd you guys get those? And why? I don't even have them in why my own. Why are you photo doing album? this? Like is this wait, Yeah, <laughs> it's anonymous. I don't know. Right? Isn't it in South Korea where they have um, your IP address has to be present whenever you post anything online? Like your IP address and oh, where no. you live. <laughs> That's, so to like to that. reduce cyberbullying, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, I, I'm it's not out sure of control. It that's is, what yeah. it is. I think that that's kind of you know a good thing. We live in a very and all the tabloids. It's out of control. Oh my gosh, those it's are like horrible. we raise our kids to be be individual and be unique and be proud of who you are and and be confident. Right. And then as soon as they get in their teens or whatever. Everything that's in front of you is tabloids and us ripping people apart that are doing well. So how on earth are we supposed to change these kids mm -hmm. when all actuality, they are just products of their environment. Yeah. And this it's is the their media. It's really the media. I don't know because, I mean, I, I do agree that the media, you know, is a really obviously bad influence on kids and stuff. But, you know, growing up, I was allowed I lived in a really strict household, and I, and I was allowed to watch radar movies. You know, they, my parents went with me to see Booty Call. Do you remember that movie? Booty yeah. Call. Can we get kinky tonight? They went with yes, me. I remember that. They didn't care because my dad knew at the end of the day, he's gonna be checking my grades. See, but you right here is the, right here. You're saying your parents but, were with you. But even if a parent, you know, is busy they can still at least check your grades because that was, was one thing that I realized. When they stopped checking my grades is when I stopped caring. Yeah. Because I would, right. as long as they checked my grades, I would have to go home and I would have to study because at the mm. end of the, you know, whenever. So parenting does make a difference then, yeah. But if I have feel no time, like parents is 50% of it. Society's not gonna change. No. So parents need to do a better job because that's not going anywhere. Were you creative when you were young? I was um, incredibly creative. You were creative? I think Non-stop. being creative is Incredibly the best important. therapy for any person that's going through hardship is just creating art, whether it's music, painting, making videos. I feel like just focusing on something and, and just really finding something that you really care that's actually productive, that's all you really need. And I a creative, totally yeah, a creative advice. Totally. I mean, I didn't, I didn't yeah. come from, like same thing with you, I had a really hard upbringing too, but for me it was art that, that was my real escape.